The European Central Bank has opted to not touch its monetary policy nor its interest rates, yet this is making Peter Hug uneasy. We'll find out why next. Peter Hug joins us on the line now. Peter, thanks for being with us. You're welcome, Daniela. Peter, let's lead with the main news of the day and the ECB and Mario Draghi not touching that interest rate of 0.75%. Honestly, Peter, I was not surprised by the news, but I think you believe otherwise. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not convinced the European recovery is as strong as people suggested, and I actually was uh, in the minority. Obviously, I was still wrong. Uh, uh, suspecting that they might ease up a little on their interest rates. Uh, uh, the fact that they did, uh, when I rethought the concept, it could have been that they didn't want to drop interest rates. It would have given the signal to the market that they were worried. But I still don't believe the Europeans are out of the woods. And uh, this, uh, this policy move by the uh, Europeans has me confused. I would have expected uh, maybe a quarter point down in their rates. Peter, but why does it make you uneasy? You think this will do what to the euro? Well, what, what concerned me after the announcement, uh, you know, I put, a, I put a small blog out this morning. Uh, what concerned me after the announcement was that the Fed came out uh, and jawboned as well, indicating that their unemployment targets probably would not be hit until 2015. Uh, which indicated to me that the Fed was going to continue its aggressive e uh, monetary easing, uh, certainly through this year and, uh, in my opinion, as I had mentioned in the past, through 2014. Uh, and you put that into context with Europeans not dropping interest rates, what should have happened would have been a move higher in the euro. The euro actually dropped 100 basis points and is still down almost three quarters of a percent from this morning's high. It it's inconsistent. Um, European rates staying up, Fed rates uh, continuing to be uh, depressed would indicate more movement into the euro and it didn't happen. Makes me a little nervous that uh, there's something else here that uh, nobody's talking about. Hmm. And what do you think that could be, Peter? What are you alluding to? I think the European economy is weaker uh, than uh, than most people uh, uh, anticipate it. And uh, I think this move today was jawboning. Uh, to detract from uh, the p potential weakness of the European economy. Peter, let me ask you, do you think it's also in the Fed's best interest to give the perception that Europe is in better shape than it may be? Well, I think it's in every central bank's interest to, to, uh, uh, to uh, jawbone or even to, to encourage uh, the market to believe that the global economic recovery is on solid footing. Uh, Otherwise, I think you would have some serious implications to the stock market. I mean, this this is a move to build wealth in, in the stock market, uh, in the um, in the retirement accounts of Americans to give them more confidence. Hopefully, with that confidence, they'll go out and spend more money and uh, get this economy rolling. I'm just not convinced uh, that that it's working. Let's talk gold now, Peter. Last time we spoke, you were eyeing the 1703 range. In this morning's commentary, you write that the confirmation by the Fed should create the impulse with traders to attempt to break uh, the upper end of gold's recent range. So, Peter, you think this will translate into good news for gold? I took it as good news. Uh, I mean, the, the bulls are looking for, for a catalyst uh, uh, to try to break this market up through the upper range. Uh, it, it traded lower and uh, it held at the 200-day moving average, uh, which was a, a buy signal, at least intraday, for, for the metals. Uh, I'm still concerned, though. Uh, if you recall last week in the 1688 level, I was uncommitted on this market. I'd rather pay a little bit more and see this range break up through 1703. Uh, or watch it break down through 1665. So we took a position here at the 200 day moving average, but I'm watching it very closely. If this impetus from the Fed indicating that they're going to keep rates where they are probably until mid 2015 uh, doesn't create the juice for the bulls to take this over 1703, uh, I'd be very wary of this market. So I'm long the market right now, uh, watching it very closely, however. Uh, Peter, those are some really good thoughts, obviously an important and critical time uh, for gold. If we look at silver now, what are some key points you're looking at? on a ratio play uh, and a rate of return play, if you're bullish the gold market, uh, 
silver is going to give you a better return in the short run on a percentage basis. But silver is also very volatile. If gold can break down through 1665, I suspect it'll test 1625. I suspect it'll hold there, uh, but that could take a dollar off silver. So I would rather pay again, I'd rather pay up for the metal. Uh, I'd like to see silver firmly establish itself over 3240 range um, before I stepped into that market. And uh, if gold got through 1703, that's where we would see silver. Uh, I then it would uh, I'd be more aggressive on the silver buy than on gold at uh, at those levels. Pete, thanks for your thoughts today. You're welcome. And thanks for watching this edition of For Pete's Sake. You can email us any comments or questions at newsfeedback at kiko.com or follow this conversation at Daniela Cambone. Thanks for watching.